let me show you an example first if i click and drag this video clip here on my timeline i can make a sequence and if i increase the size just by double clicking here um, maybe a little bit more pressing alt or option then if i scroll the mouse wheel it will increase in size so here you can see the audio section of this video clip right the audio of this clip is not even whenever i was talking here you see the volume level is, is pretty this. correct but whenever i was playing back okay, my screen record the volume level is little bit low right today. so there is an effect in adobe premiere pro which called dynamic processing you can use that effect to equalize the volume level or gain level in adobe premiere pro very easily and today we are going to learn that hey guys welcome to another episode of each and every effect in adobe premiere pro and today we are going to learn how you can use dynamic processing if you want to download this video clip you can download it from the link in the description below so that you can follow along with me right so how we can apply dynamic processing of course you have to go to effects panel and then you have to navigate here which is audio effect then amplitude and compression and then there is an effect called dynamic processing you can just click and drag it here to apply the effect on top of your audio then go to effects control panel if you don't see always go to window and then enable effects control then this panel will appear if you just scroll down you'll see dynamic processing effect is available here right so if i click on edit i can change the setting of dynamic processing of course you will have the preset option so you can select any preset that you want to use for your exact audio suppose you want to use vocal limiter you can use a vocal limiter there are a lot of effects that you can use right we're not going to use the effect we will going to learn how you can manually adjust the settings right you'll see a graph here don't be confused very easy graph easy to understand how you can understand it there are two different section of this graph right this bottom section is audio input gain level you can see decibel level that means the input gain of this audio is this much right if i play it back so if i play you here, can see, see the bar is, it is just engaged. going up and down that means that section okay, has this much ready. gain and this is the output gain level if i change anything from here it will affect our output section right suppose i want to lower the gain from the audio which has the input gain minus 20 to minus 10 decibel or minus 6 decibel what i can do i can just click and drag this section just like that and it will lower the gain of that audio level right so if i play it back now you will see the gain level have been decreased so if i so you can see the here, overall see gain level have been decreased again if i want to increase the gain level then i can do it just by clicking and dragging this section and this section now if i play it back you'll see the gain have been so increased and it is clear you so you can change or tweak the settings using this graph i will use adobe audition so that you can understand that thing in a better way because adobe audition has a better way to visually represent the audio waveform so if i want to send this clip to adobe audition i need to install adobe audition on my computer then i can press alt or option then i can click on this audio it will select the audio only then i can right click and then edit clip in adobe audition it will send the audio clip to adobe audition adobe audition has the same effect right so if i go here on this effects rack if you don't see effects rack you can go to window and then you can enable effects rack and here if you click here then amplitude and compression you'll see dynamic processing effect is here right now we can change the thing the advantage of adobe audition is i can see the before and after audio if i click here on this section which called show preview editor then you see the upper section is our before and the lower section is our after if i change anything from here it will affect my preview here right so you can see the audio gain have been increased so let's edit our audio now right i want to increase the volume level of this section and i want to decrease this volume level a little bit right so what i can do i can add some points suppose if i play it back hey guys welcome. the gain level of this section is maybe hey around guys, welcome to another minus 18 to tutorial. minus 12 or minus 9 back. so what i can do i can add some points here from minus 18 maybe from here and then here and then i can decrease this section just a little bit and i can increase this section right and i can 
at as much point as I want. So that is my graph for now. If you want to have a smooth graph, you can enable the spline curves. It will make the graphs a little bit smoother. And you can see the audio level of this section have been increased a bit. So if you want to decrease that audio level, you can just click and drag this section a little bit more. Maybe a little bit. Now the audio is looking great to me. So if I play it back and show you actually the so if I play here you will see it is engaged. Hey guys, welcome to another to me the audio level YouTube. is pretty great, right? So if I want to apply this effect, I can just click on apply, it will apply the effects here, right? And I can press Ctrl or Command S to save it. And if I get back to Adobe Premiere Pro, it will be applied automatically. You can see the audio have been applied. Let me show you how you can do that exact same thing in Adobe Premiere Pro. You can add the cliff here, then go to effects and then apply dynamic processing. Go here, if it's control panel, then edit. You'll see the same thing here. You can just decrease this thing a little bit and you can increase the graph here. Just like that. And select spline curves. And see how much it has hey increased. Guys, welcome to another Adobe Premiere Pro Dude. It is engaged. Yeah. It's looking great. Then you can select the audio only just by pressing Alter option. Select the clip, then go to here, render and replace to see how much it has effect. So you can see we have done the same thing using Adobe Audition and Adobe Premiere Pro, and we have gotten the same kind of result, right? So lastly, let's see. The changes if I go here and then if I just click and drag the original clip, this is the V4. It, it is engaged. Hey guys, welcome to another ad. And this is the after. It is engaged. Hey guys, welcome to another Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial. So that's it. That is how you can use dynamic processing in Adobe Premiere Pro so that you can get pretty similar kind of audio level throughout your video i hope you have liked this video if you have liked this video and learned something new from this one then you can give me a thumbs up if you're new to this channel want to learn adobe premiere pro video editing then you can subscribe to this channel to get more awesome videos just like this one i'll catch you guys on the next one and then goodbye